Let's talk to Sir Gerald Howarth, who's a former Defence Minister. Uh, Sir Gerald, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon here on Talk TV. How are you? Well, good afternoon, Peter. I mean, what an extraordinary weekend we've just experienced. We all woke up on uh, Saturday morning to see this extraordinary sight of uh, these mercenaries uh, having a comp uh, being taken Rostov on Don, a, a, a Russian city with a, a, apparently complete impunity. Uh, and then during the course of the day, uh, saw this uh, rather motley rabble march upon Moscow again with apparently complete impunity. We were so, most extraordinary development, but very difficult for any of us really to discern exactly what is going on. Don't forget, this is, is not a free society in Russia. Mm. They have no free press. They have no accountable democracy, uh, and uh, it's very therefore very difficult to establish exactly what is going on. But it is fascinating in terms. I was chatting a second ago about the the role of social media in all of this, in terms of the fact that people can just subscribe to Telegram channels. I mean, no one who really wants to know what was happening on Saturday would have gone to state media, of course. But then we had Vladimir Putin saying hello guys, you know, I'm the commander-in-chief here, I am the Russian president. But when you need to point those things out and when you need to remind people that you're in control, perhaps you're actually not that in control. What do you think, Sir Gerald? Absolutely. I think what we need to understand here is that the Russian people only respect strength. And they have seen in Putin a strong man who has certainly tried to deliver that which they all sought, which was the re-establishment of Russia uh, as a key player in the world, because they have fallen from grace. I mean, they're about the 21st uh, uh, most economically powerful country in the world. Uh, who in the United Kingdom wants to buy anything from Russia except mm. possibly vodka? Uh, we've seen that they've been deploying 1950s tanks in Ukraine. Uh, this is a brutal regime, but the people of Russia have broadly supported what their leader has been doing because they resent this fall from grace. And the question now arises, what well, do they, and much more importantly, do the henchmen around Putin think that he remains strong enough to deliver that uh, kind of rebuilding of Russia as an, a powerful state? Or do they feel that this extraordinary event over the weekend has exposed him as being fundamentally weak and that the time has come uh, to remove him and replace him with somebody else. So the prospect is if that happens, it'll be somebody uh, even more brutal than uh, Putin himself. It doesn't seem or it doesn't seem realistic in any way that Prigozhin wants to necessarily be leader. And that to me is one of the biggest questions really about all this in terms of what the point of Saturday was and of course it was all over very very quickly because we went to from a situation where Prigozhin was apparently uh, going to be tried for high crimes and misdemeanors and treason essentially and uh, then it went to oh no actually you can go off to Belarus and have a nice kind of retirement who knows what inducements were given there in terms of finance or whatever and that the Wagner forces widely varying estimates in terms of how many there of them there are from 8,000 to 20,000 incorporated in, into the Russian army. It sort of was over as soon as it began, but this is not the closing of a book. This is probably just the start of another chapter, don't you think? Yes, and in his rant on uh, Saturday, he made it clear that he was not intending to create a coup. This was not a coup. This was an expression of anger and frustration at the way in which uh, the operation, the, the, the war in Ukraine had been conducted. And his criticism was leveled at the Russian generals in particular, uh, but the way in which, uh, as, his, uh, as his men were drawn back from Bakhmut, uh, they were attacked uh, by Russians. So this man is, uh, and he's not a soldier, don't forget. Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, he's a, he's a hot dog seller and a, and a minor criminal. But this man bitterly resented the way in which uh, the war was being prosecuted. But a rather interesting point also emerged. Uh, that is that he did say that he couldn't see the point of the, uh, the war in Ukraine. Mm. And the question is, at what point will ordinary people in Russia, particularly those who've seen their young, their young men from their families slaughtered uh, in, in this brutal war which he inflicted upon uh, Ukraine, at what point will they say, we've had enough of yeah, this? Yeah, it, uh, yeah. According to reports, I mean, they've lost something like a quarter of a million men, mm -hmm. either wounded or killed. Mm -hmm. This is a really, really deep blow to Russia. Uh, so it's very difficult to see it. question, of course, arises, 
are we going to see from Putin a lashing out? Will he send, uh, will he send uh, Prigozhin to Belarus? What will uh, the uh, Belarus commander, what will he do with him? Mm -hmm. He won't be happy having him running around with 25,000 men in Belarus. He'll want him under control. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we are seeing an extraordinary state of flux at the moment. I think it's right the British government and its allies are looking very carefully. I'll just say one thing to Trevor, whom you quoted at the uh, outset of this piece. To Trevor, who is concerned that we are borrowing money to send it to support Ukraine, this is as much our campaign as it is Ukraine's. Because if Ukraine is defeated, if Putin and his brutal henchmen win, do not imagine, Trevor, that it is going to end here. He will then seek other targets. He will seek to expand to what was the former uh, Soviet Union. Uh, and that threatens all of us. So, my friend Trevor, we need to be supportive of Ukraine. Drive out the Russians. And this is a moment, uh, I have to say, Peter, this is a moment when Britain and the West should be piling everything, throwing the kitchen sink into Ukraine to give them every possible support, because Russia has had all winter to build up its defences. Putin is now completely distracted. Potentially, we don't know what's going on in the Kremlin, but potentially about to be evicted, replaced by another henchman. It is our opportunity to try to give the Ukraine even more support immediately to try to drive through those defensive lines, which may well have been weakened by what's just happened, uh, okay. and then cut off uh, Crimea from the rest of Russia. Okay, I'd love to talk to you about Ukraine in depth some other time, Sir Gerald. We're just slightly run out of time now, but I'd love to talk to you about Ukraine some other time. Really appreciate that analysis, absolutely first class. Uh, Sir Gerald Howarth, our former Defence Minister, giving his take on what's happening in Russia. Really, really interesting. Uh, I think I disagree with him on the on the Ukraine point, to be brutally honest, but uh, we, it, we'll we'll get into that in greater depth perhaps on another, on another programme, because of course we're talking about specifically about Russia uh, today.